Warwick Kappa is turning 50. Has the wild child grown gracefully in the middle age? Let's find out. Welcome, Warwick. What's the answer? Welcome, Mike. Uh, probably not too gracefully. I still like to get a bit of a touch up and get my hair done, make sure the skin's smooth, and I'm happy to look about 37. <laughs> Let's just say, Michael, Yeah. that's why they have rubbers on the end of pencils. I've made a few mistakes. You have, haven't you? Hmm. And when did you come to the realisation of that? About 15 years ago. Did you? Sometimes I do without thinking. Mm -hmm. And I've, since I've grown a little bit older, I've got a bit wiser. Okay. Well, Warwick Kappa sort of wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. Talking about uh, changes in your life and, and realisations about things, these are some of your interesting roles since your post-football days. Stripper, metre maid, porn star, male escort, comedian, singer, lollipop man. An all-round movie star. Yeah. An all-round movie star. Now, at which point during that, that career did you realise that you perhaps weren't doing things as well as you might? Probably um, after the video. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but that was unfortunately was leaked out. That was a porn video. Yeah, I was actually that was actually leaked out. I was actually the, the I was actually the Paris Hilton of Australia at that stage. <laughs> and I thought maybe that that's a little bit risque. But if you did the porn video and you wanted to be the Paris Hilton of Australia, of course it's going to get out. What was the, yeah? What other purpose would it have? It was supposed to be a private thing. Yeah. But someone got a copy of it and leaked it out. Is there something in your life, one specific thing that has really caused you some heartburn? Probably the worst thing is when the sun gave me a serve in the uh, magazine. Cop I was going to ask you about your son, Yeah, Indy? copped a bit of a serve then because the ex-wife was nasty. She didn't want to get divorced and I, and I wanted to move on because we weren't, weren't quite suited. So she um, made me son do a bit of a bad story, which painted me in a bad picture, Mike. They were pretty graphic quotes so, from your yeah, son. wasn't happy with that There was a, an article in New Idea, I think, in about 2009. Yep. Now, I'm the last bloke to sit here and profess to be a great parent, but... It, would, it must have hurt to have your son, your flesh and blood, talking about you like that. Yeah, I think that's the only thing she could um, put against me because she was a bit uh, bitter about the split because um, she wouldn't sign divorce papers and I just got them signed anyway. We had an annulment. So you had your marriage annulled? Yeah, she didn't want to do it and I, I had enough. So she put the son against me. Like, like but he was, a gr he was grown up though, Warwick, wasn't he? Indy was yeah, he was about 16, 17 then. Yeah. yeah. Is he not entitled to have a view of his own? I mean, do you think that... Someone could coerce a 16-year-old in saying things that he didn't want to say? Yes, especially her. Really? She's very pushy, very hard, and um, he even admitted to me, he said, sorry, um, mum made me do it, so. Mm. Are you reconciled with him now? Yeah, everything's yeah. fine. He comes over every two weeks, happy as Larry. He's a third-year apprentice carpenter, going well. And you're both on the Gold Coast in yeah. Queensland. What, um, if I wanted to hire you for a celebrity appearance at a function or a corporate event or whatever, what would it cost me? Do a lot of those. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, about three grand. Three grand. Worth every cent. <laughs> I do 21st, 40th, bar misters. I even married a couple last year from Geelong. You married a couple? Yeah, I was a um, celebrity celebrant. If you went to a corporate function, say you were sitting around a board table for a corporation, what would your theme be? What would you talk to them about? What would the, the, the tenor of the discussion be? Probably getting the best out of yourself. Because I was the first million dollar player and probably worth every cent. <laughs> and I could also play a bit. I was inducted yeah. in the Hall of Fame. I do corporate functions all around the world. The I'll Swans do, Hall of Fame? Yep. yep. Hopefully AFL next year if I come to their senses. Because <laughs> I actually made the Swans about $100 million in 15 years. So if I was to talk about when I do big um, corporations, I talk about getting the best out of yourself. Mm -hmm. and how to market yourself and be, um, don't, be, don't, don't be scared and um, show people what you got. Jared Healy told me that um, at the height of your powers in the mid to late 80s in Sydney, he said you were the, se the, the second biggest sportsman in this country behind Greg Norman. That's nice of him. Well, he said yeah, that, yeah. That's he, probably true. He's an old surfer mate of mine. He is. He good player. Yeah. Won a brown loan, three best player. players. Good player. Better than that. Yeah, a bit better than that. Mm. Not quite as good as Greg Williams and myself, but could play a bit, <laughs> Jared. <laughs> we'll come back to that. You, you were Sydney's first marquee player, weren't you? Yeah. Didn't you, it, that was by virtue of the fact that South Melbourne went to Sydney, or was it... Was it... Yeah, I'll share that with the viewers, Mike. Um, played in the thirds for two years. I uh, recruited when I was 16 for Murphy Districts, me and Dave Reese jones uh, wasn't easy. I had to fight hard for two years in the thirds on $100 a game, but I knew I believed in myself. And I knew once Dave Reese jones made it and Frank Gallus made it, I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. And contrary to what people think, I trained hard. Loved Tom Hafey. He got the best out of me, and I trained 11 months a year. I knew I was going to make it. So with the young kids these days, you've really got to believe in yourself, especially in today's market. 
that's, and that, that's how it transformed. I was there at 16. I was told I wasn't quite good enough the first year. By whom? By um, the coach back then, I think Barry White. He um, he said, just go have another, another year at, at senior level and get a bit tougher, get some, put some weight on, get do some weights, harden up. So I went back to Oakley Districts and played in the seniors against men and won the best and fairest in the comp. Me and Dave Reese jones he won the 18s, I won the 16s. And then I, then I came back and then it was probably a cap of show time. I thought, <laughs> I'm back and I'm staying there. <laughs> were you playing as a full yeah. forward then? I was ruck. Ruck, were you? Yeah. Big I'd, jumper? Were you a big jumper as a kid? Yeah, I was very good at high jump. Yeah. That's why I could take the cappers. <laughs> it was um, the, the rest of history, wasn't it? I used to take, they said uh, Peter was us, they took the mark of the year. I took better marks him at training. I took about <laughs> seven a week, he took two a year. <laughs> well, why, why don't you have the title of the AFL's mark of the century then? Which I, I think well, I, goes to Sean Smith, doesn't it? Yeah, well actually he was actually second. Mum was a mark of the century. That was on all the billboards over Langford. That was over the Chris Langford, yeah. the Chris Langford mark. Where you put your hands on his shoulders, actually. Not really. That was just the there. It is. Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. That that, that was on the, actually the mark of the century, and it's on all the billboards for two years. Yeah. And Mark was up actually up there for five and a half hours, and thought, <laughs> I've got to mark this. It's going to be a free kick. <laughs> and as you can see, Michael, I was up so high. And this is fair dinkum. I got, actually was up there. I got a phone call. I was air traffic control. They said, get out of the airspace, please. <laughs> Didn't you say you were going to be serious today? Oh, yeah. I want to know, the, I was at that game, it was, a, it was a Swans Hawthorne final at Waverley, correct? Lost by 92 points. You, yeah, you kicked four goals that day, including your 100th goal. 103, when you, yeah. When you took that mark and then kicked the goal, Chris Langford extended his hand to you, did he not? Which was deemed to be highly unusual at the time. I thought that was great sportsmanship. What did he say? Well done, Warwick, great effort. Did he? Yeah. I thought, what a great guy. Hmm. There's not enough sportsmanship in the, in the game now. 1986-87, you kicked... Uh, 195 goals, I think, from yeah. memory. Yeah, right? 92 and I get 92 goals in 1986. Yep. And 103 the year after. Yep. I would have got 100 that year, but Joanne uh, walked out and we had a bad fight. And Tommy Hafer was very dirty because she walked out seven weeks to go. Did it affect your form? Yeah. So I went from about 3.6 goals a game to about one, and it cost me 100 goals because me. My head wasn't there. Might have cost the Swans too, because yeah. in the two finals, you blokes finished, I think, second or third on the home and away ladder, yep. and then lost both finals, and you kicked two goals in each of those finals. Yeah, Swans hated Joan for that, because Tom wasn't happy. Rod Carter had a fight with her, and she had a fight with Jared Healy. She wasn't very well liked back then. Got any sympathy for your wife? A little bit, yeah. In terms of, of your behaviour at the time, I mean, were you... Not really. A little, maybe a little bit. Things happen. But she got well, well compensated, and um, she enjoyed the good things out of it, but didn't like the bad things. You were huge. I mean, there's no question. You, in that period in Sydney, you were you preceded Tony Lockett, obviously, and he was yeah. massive in terms of their development. Yeah. But you were the first of the poster boys in Sydney for the Swans, yeah. weren't you? I was really the first marketing person. Mm. And I took a poll in the, um, in the um, schoolyards. Cause when Jeffrey Edelson came up, it was fantastic for me. They wanted a pretty boy, poster boy, to sell the market to Sydney. And I was it, and they took a poll at the schools, and they said, yeah, we like Warwick Kappa, he's got a nice look. So I bought a song out, and had a number two song called Don't Take What's Mine. Number two on what chart, Warwick? Um, top 100, comes out every year. Good song. <laughs> I Don't Take What's Mine. <laughs> I only take what's mine. And then Captain Cucumber came out. That was the next song, too. Yeah, how'd that go? I won't sing that. It's You're embarrassing. <laughs> His name was Warwick. Oh, I he like that one. For that Kappa Cabana. Yeah, that, that was yeah. the next one. There's yeah. some interesting lyrics in that, uh, that song. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Mo's shots, yeah. It's interesting, Mike. It was a pointed reference to Leanne Edelston, the wife of uh, Dr. Jeffrey Edelston. You yeah. were friendly with Leanne, weren't you? Yeah, we were friends of the family. I used to be his uh, right hand man, Jeffrey. How close were you with Leanne? Just good friends, yeah. That's all? Yeah. And it's because he's kicked on with Bree. It's great. Bryn. Bryn, is it? Yeah. I thought it was Bree. Same thing, yeah. <laughs> Bree's cheese, were Yeah. I like Brie cheese, it's nice. I'll do the funny stuff, Mike. <laughs> Next question, please, mate. A lot of people tell me that. Yeah. At the end of 1987, you make this decision to depart the Swans and join the Brisbane, yeah. Brisbane Bears. It seemed, in hindsight, it was clearly the wrong decision, and lots of your friends at the time were telling you that it was the wrong decision. Why did you go? I'll probably bl blame Jaren again for that. She was. That had been against the Swans players. She didn't like them. She wanted to leave, and she loved the Gold Coast. And I didn't really want to go, but it was a million dollars back then. I was the highest transfer fee, four hundred seventy-five thousand. Four seventy-five. There was the transfer which, fee. Yeah, which lips to Brad Hardy. He was dirty on that, so I was a better <laughs> player. And he wouldn't pick his player up either when he won the Brownlow. They say that. I was yeah. dirty on that. He yeah. said everyone loved playing on Brad Hardy because I kept running off him. 
keep, they, they keep five goals in him. But good Let's play, go back though. to your decision though. You, the the yep. transfer fee is 470, yep. and your contract was three lots of 350. Yeah, it was about a million dollar thing. Yeah. Now, Jared Healy, just for comparison here, for context, Healy was getting half of what you were getting, and he was the best player in Sydney. Uh, the best player, in terms of he won the best and yeah. fairest. He wasn't the best marketing player. He wasn't no. the good looking as me, but he was okay. <laughs> Yeah. So you've very but, deftly avoided answering the question as to why you went to uh, oh yeah. why you went north. Good question. I mean, you were very good. In, you were outstanding in Sydney, and the club was strong. I'll tell you exactly why. Your viewers will probably want to know this. Jane wanted to go, so I went. It was good money at the time, but bad mistake because I got there. I had my own penthouse, my own butler, my own shop. <laughs> butler. I had everything. Yeah, <laughs> I had gold spoons and I had my own penthouse. I went and saw Johnny Farnham, my own private concert. But after the first four games, I knew I was stuffed. I couldn't play football. They couldn't. They won about three games that year. Yeah, I think I kicked 45 goals, and I should have, I should have stayed there. But Jane wanted to leave. I remember now. And I'll tell you about a phone call that I was privy to because it occurred in my office. I was working at the AFL. Diesel came in. Uh, Diesel as in Greg Williams. He says, "I need to use your phone." You know, he'd skip yep. that out. I said, "Sure." He rang you and he says, "Wiz, you can't do it." This was just before yeah. you made the final decision. Yeah. Now, when you've got blokes like Hafey and Williams and Healy in your ear and telling you it was a mistake. Were you headstrong? Yeah, I knew it was. But when you, you knew the, then it was wrong. You, you know when you got a headstrong wife, Mike? Yeah. You push yeah. and push. But you can't keep blaming happened. her for all these yeah, things. Yeah, she wanted to go there. And I shouldn't have gone. I should have sorted it myself and said, no, I'm staying there. I'm going to cut my career about three years short. What did Tommy say to you when he knew that you were thinking of defecting? Can't believe you're going. Mm. He goes, that bloody wife of yours? I said, yep, she got me head again. I shouldn't have gone. You're right. I knew after about the first 10 games, this, this, this is going to be a tough slog. Because I had no idea. We're changing shoulder sheds. We had Paul Cronin running it. He didn't know anything about football. This great, was down at Carrara? Yeah, great yeah. bloke, Paul Cronin, but knew nothing about football. Same was Case. And um, I thought, this is going to be tough. We had Peter Knights. He couldn't coach Pigs to be dirty. <laughs> Top bloke, Peter. Can I say that about Knights here? Yeah, I can, because he, he hurt my career. Um, real nice guy. I liked him, but he had no direction. And the players, um, most of the players at the time had, had a coach. He was listening to them. I said, Peter, put me some heart back. I can't get a kick here. But you went there. It was the big goal kicker. Yeah, no, I, I tried mean, you'd, that. You'd been a hundred goal yeah. kicker in Sydney. Why wouldn't he play a full forward, which he did? Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to play a full forward, but after seven or eight games, I knew this was going to be a nightmare. The ball came down too slow, and even all the commentators said, and Mark Roberts, my own teammate, said, how's Paul Wright going to get a kick here? That they, they keep putting mm. over his head and going elsewhere. Because I was the highest paid, and the glamour full forward, they didn't want to know me. Did the players resent that? Yeah, they hated it. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask for it. But I had, I had that last 10 years. So they wouldn't pass the ball to me. McIver put it over my head. Brad Hardy used to do 70 metre torps. He'd rather put it out in the forward than pass to me. Really? Are you serious yeah. about that? Yeah. And he actually admitted it. They wanted me to uh, work for my goals. They thought I had wow. it too easy. So because that's you, why because I, of all the money yeah, you get. They'd, yeah. rather, they'd rather lose games and play as a team. There's a view, Warwick, that when you were in Brisbane, uh, that Peter Knights, the coach, wanted to drop you in your second year. Yep. And Christopher Scase, the owner, told Peter Knights he couldn't drop you. Good question, Mike. That really happened. We were the untouchable six because we were the big three or four million dollars of signing. There's top six players. And they're being Kappa? Uh, Caps, Roger Merritt, McIver, Brad Hardy. Martin Leslie? Martin Leslie, I think Jeff Rains. And they said they can't drop them because they're the biggest names, right? And Peter Knights was hell bent on making me as a scapegoat, right? So he used to pay me out of position. They didn't get, I, I wouldn't get any passes. Then they were just trying to drop me. So he, he wanted to go over um, Paul Cronin's head. So he did. But, but now, this is 20 years on, right? Hmm. You look at the situation. Should not the coach determine who plays in his football team? Yeah, I was happy with that. But why couldn't um, Peter be um, up front with us and get... I, I can't believe why he didn't touch the tell the players to kick me and use, mm. use one of the best four forwards in the league to, to their advantage. They're paying the money. Yeah. Why wouldn't they use me? But, but that, I had enough. You've answered your own question. I mean, yeah. logic says if he's the coach of this footy team and they yeah. need to win games, why wouldn't they kick it to yeah. him? Yeah. He, 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 he kind of resented me being there. I could Did just he? tell from day one. Yeah, it's not, that's not the Peter Knights I know. Yeah, that's the Peter Knights I know. But he, he wouldn't, he's never been accused by anyone of the Hawthorne of being a big mm. head. No. Nah. I quite liked him as a person, but he's, he wouldn't... Um, Give them direction to give them me for some okay, reason. Okay, okay. And, and that hurt me, yeah. Let's go to Princess Park and uh, you're playing for Brisbane. 89. Yep. 89. Uh, up to Sable. Up to Sable. You've got a mark in the dying seconds of the game at about 50 metres, correct? Remember that one well. We all remember it well because the fallout was that 
you kicked the goal, Brisbane won, Carlton Sack, Robert Walls. Yeah. There was one more chapter in my career, which has been very colourful. <laughs> they were trying to drop me anyway, because they wanted to use me as a scapegoat, right? Because I was getting paid the most. And I said, you can drop me if you want to, because I'll get the same money in seconds, I don't care. At least I'll pass the ball to me. But I thought, I'll try and hang on to my spot this time. I'll go through with, with, with you. It was packed house, right? And we know how bad they are, Carlton supporters. They're parochial. Nice to give them a serve back. I just love it. I, I couldn't help myself. Kick three, 45 seconds to go. I was on McKenzie. Wasn't that flash a player. So not back, and I thought I'd fix him up. Warren McKenzie. Warren yeah. McKenzie, yeah. not bad. Good ordinary player. Played in the premiership. Wasn't a worry cap it, but he was okay. <laughs> Serviceable. It came down, I thought, this is my chance. I sat in his back, hang time. I was about 55 out. 55 out? Yeah, I saw yeah. the line there. I thought, I'm a chance here. I thought, I, 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 I could actually go from villain to hero in one kick. And I could only kick 45 at the, at the best, like you said. I wasn't a very long kick. But we had a howling win, luckily. I thought, why not visualise getting in goal? I can do this. Because I very much believed in myself. And I ran as fast as I could in, and it went over his he the head. Mm. Rich Jones tried to touch it, and he was sacked. So, of course he got sacked, yeah. Yeah, so gone from villain to hero. So it was good. You, you were, for such a classical mark, you were an unusual kick, weren't you? Yeah, a bit a little awkward on the right side. Yeah. Because I had a knee complaint. The left is that side, why is it? Yeah, I had a bit of a... So it wasn't from no, you juniors? I had a bad cartilage, yeah. 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 And it used to sort of click a bit and catch, mm. so I used to drop it with two hands. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So I tried to stay at, at always out 30 metres. So Tom, mate, hey, used to make me back on the line yep. and make him bring it to me. Because you got a lot more chance kicking a goal 20 out than 50 anyway. 1987, when I was doing this research to talk to you, um, the most staggering stat to me was that in, you, in 1987 you kicked 103 goals, correct? Yeah. That was a better rate than a goal for every two kicks. I mean, that's mm. a staggering conversion rate. That's okay. It's, no, it's better than that. It's good, is it? Oh, yeah. I'll take it then. But you, So I think there's a couple of factors there. One, you were probably more accurate than a lot of people thought yeah. looking at your style. And I didn't two, miss that many, yeah. You didn't go that far away from gold, did nah. you? Nah. I tried to drop with two hands and try and uh, steady and not have too much margin forever yep. in the, with the space. Yep. Yeah. Did you receive any death threats when you moved to Brisbane? Another good question, Michael. actually did. I had my um, own bodyguard in Brisbane for two years and they wouldn't tell me for two years because I got about four or five death threats. If you leave the swans, we're going we're to kill you. And they were considered genuine? Yeah, yeah. So we hired a top security guard for t uh, three years in Brisbane. And he used you were to a security guard for three years? Yeah, he used to follow me from end to end every game. At the footy? Yep. His name was Brian. I still remember it. Wow. Mate of mine. Okay. After the break, your reaction to being omitted from the Swans team of the century? How do you like the modern rules that apply to uh, marking contests? Chopping arms, yeah. hands in back, blocking, all that sort of stuff. I think if I had to play it now, I would have got 200 goals a year, 180 <laughs> goals a year. I got one free kick in 10 weeks when I played back then. <laughs> you know that's a fib because we checked yeah, that stat. Maybe five games, but they used to smash me in the head all the time, they hit me arms, chop me out. Tell us who you're talking uh, about. Frawley and uh, Pert. And the, the worst one was um, Mick Martin. He used to whack me a lot of times. Mm. Mick whacked a lot yeah, of times. He was a mate of mine. He used to love whacking behind. Yeah. It's easier to hit someone behind, eh? Yeah. Try and do it face on, that's a bit harder. So you copped a lot of that, didn't you? Yeah. Because you played in front. Danny oh. Hughes. Yeah. Kicked five goals in him plenty of times. Yeah. And they used to always whack your head or your arms. Mm. But for the forwards these days, to be serious, it's a, it's a lot easier now. You get more free kicks and there's three umpires in every section. Were you more offended by the pain of the head or the fact that they upset your head? Both, yeah. yeah. I made the makeup run and the hair, and the hair <laughs> get ruffled. Who was the toughest bloke you played on in terms of uh, having to beat them? Probably Rick Kennedy. Rick Kennedy, he was tough in both yeah, ways. Yeah, he it? was at least 15 kilo, kilos heavier. Yep. Strong in body. Yep. And always whack in the head or the arms. Yeah. And then he used to fall on you on purpose. So I got him back a few times and give him a few nice corgis getting back. Yeah. I said, just keep, I said, Rick, I'm going to fix you up. He goes, what do you mean? I used to sort of wreck their heads mentally because I was mad. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit like Rhys Jones. <laughs> what I used to do, Mike, was um, I said, here comes the ball, Rick. Get ready. He goes, what do you mean? I said, because I'm going to sit on your head. It's going to be Mark of the Year again. You'll be on the front page of the Herald Sun tomorrow. <laughs> Under you. I'll be on top of you, buddy. He goes, you're a bit crazy. <laughs> he kept trying to you know, grab me in the bum and the socks. And I, the, the, thing, the thing was, Mike, I liked it. I said, keep doing that. <laughs> keep doing that, Rick. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't have grabbed your bum because those shorts were painted yeah. on, weren't they? Actually, yeah. I actually why, why did you wear them so tight? I actually got them off my son when he was six. I thought I'd wear my son's shorts. No, seriously. Why, why were you so... Uh, keen to have, they were almost like bathers, weren't they? Can I actually share that real story with you? Yeah. Okay, well, the first game of league football, I had baggy shorts and dark hair and black boots. 
I didn't feel comfortable, Michael. Greg Williams gave me a pass around the wing. I went down to pick it up. This is why I wore tight shorts. I tell this story a hundred times a year. I went down to pick it up. Instead of one ball being out of three balls, <laughs> two blue ones and a red Sharon, I thought, I've got to get tighter. What about the Kappa Kabbalah? You said in this, uh, that's a 2009 song. Yep. And there's a line there that says, didn't crack an entry for the team of the century. I remember that one. Yeah. Now, you were clearly, you were upset and offended, weren't you, that you were left out of Sydney's team of the century? Very upset. Kicked about over but, 400 goals for the club. You did. Now, let me, let me set the case first. Yep. The two key forwards or full forwards, a locket and Pratt. Now, as good as you were, I mean, surely you're not suggesting that you should have taken the place of either Tony Lockett or Bob Pratt. Lockett should keep most of his guys from St Kilda anyway, but did well with Sydney too. Yeah. I was happy for him to play full forward, but I was dirty because I didn't even get forward pocket on the bench. So I was a bit upset, and we pushed the table over. At the, that was at the, I was at that function. That yeah, was the Hall of Fame function. Yeah, it wasn't happy. You pushed the table over and, was, and walked yeah, out. I thought, if, I thought if Dave Murphy and Bark Bays can get in, yeah. Why can't I get in the bench? I, I, I think I had a valid reason, or forward pocket. I've done so much for that club for 10 years. Mm. I was a little bit dirty, and then I didn't speak to them for a couple of years. And you that, walked out, didn't you? Yeah, like? and they wanted me to play all their fun, do, do all their functions and play their stuff fundraisers, but they couldn't even put me in there. Wasn't happy. Do so, you regret your show of petulance at that function? Yeah, I was a bit upset, yeah. But do you regret it? Not really. I don't no. regret anything in life. I always move forward and I get over it. I, I wear my heart in the sleeve, Mike. We, I know that. And I'm happy because I, I, I thought I should have been there. Okay. So the, uh, yeah, we most, talk, players, okay. most players don't stand up for themselves, so I do. Mm. And then they redeem themselves, took them four or five years, and put me in the Hall of Fame, they realised. Buddy Franklin is out of contract at the end of this year. Yep. They're going to throw bucket loads of money at him, particularly yeah. the expansion clubs. If by chance you cross paths with him and he asks you for some advice about whether he should go to, say, GWS, what would you say? No. If I, if I had my time again, I wouldn't have gone. <clears throat> I'd rather take a bit, a bit less money and stay where he is mm -hmm. with his teammates, yeah. <clears throat> and I think he'll still be on a million dollars a year at Hawthorne anyway. Yeah, he would He's be. worth that. Well, you're talking about a bit less money. You got three fifty a year to go to the Brisbane yeah. Bears. What were you on at the Swans? Oh, I think it was only about 175 or something. A lot less, yeah. That was pretty good money in those yeah, days, it was okay, it? yeah. But I was worth that in awareness, just getting people <laughs> to the game. I doubled the membership in six months. Literally? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's did facts. You? Okay. I got I got them to five thousand a game, up to twenty five thousand. So that's all about marketing, marketing yourself, being a package. You can play football, but it's all about everything else too. Who of the modern day players sports the best mullet? Is it I'll, Tex Walker or is it uh, Ivan Marich? Well, they're great players. I love them both. I do do love Richmond, but I have got a um, favour Tex. I love Texie Walker's um, mullet. Good player, Tex Walker. Good, yeah. Better kick than me, but no, it's not quite as good as Mark. Not yeah. quite as attractive. But <laughs> I hope he comes back next year and kicks 100. Because he's great. He's the kind of player um, the modern day footballer needs. Agree with the that. Club. We need some, um, we need some um, more showmanship. It's lacking badly. There's no, there's no entertainers now. Now, let me get this straight. Yep. Because uh, I can get a few things wrong. You have an apartment on the Gold Coast in which you live. Yeah. You also and now beach. rent it out. Yep. And you stay with the tenants. This is our new business because it's been done once before in America, but I'm the first one to do it in Australia, and it's called Hanging with the Stars, which is me, <laughs> of course, you know that, <laughs> right? And they they pay a small fee of five thousand a week, yeah, just a weekend, yeah, a weekend, and they get to stay in my bedroom with leopard skin um, bedspreads, and they've got a lot of mirrors everywhere. The whole room is mirrored. They can watch their favourite video, have a chardonnay, and they get to ride in my BMW. And I sh and with you, yeah, because I ran for mayor. I'm very well, well known in Queensland, so I'm well known in Australia actually, but Queensland <laughs> I actually ran for mayor, and they can have the whole footy, football experience at my place. Are Barbecues. We, have you had any takers yet? Yeah, four or five, killing it. $5,000 a yep. weekend. What's wrong with that? To stay at your place with you. Yep. And I'm their, I'm their, I'm their chef. Wow. They go, they have, we have dinner at the um, casino. Yep. Who Favourite pays for that? Club. I do. Hmm. I look after everything. And they get, they have a spa, wear a capa, they can sit in the swan's chair. <laughs> and look at the seven inch plasma and just re reminisce of my favourite videos. Not highlights, which goes for about three and a half weeks. <laughs> I don't even want to laugh at Did you know, Mike? Uh, I actually had 45 scrapbooks. Book me in, will you, for October when the free season Okay, half price for you, Michael. You, <laughs> thank you, Warwick. Your book, 
full, F O L full. forward. Full forward. Another bestseller, Mike. Yep. Uh, well, it ought to be because in that book you admitted to taking speed, as in the illegal substance. Another good question. Before the 1986 final series. That actually was true. I'll tell you how that came. I used to work, work with a great guy called um, Merv Neagle, who passed mm -hmm. away a few months ago. We actually got a fundraiser for him, one of the best players in football. Tough as they and, come. And a very, very good player. Tough as they come. Yep. He got second to Brownlow. He yep. should have actually won the Brownlow that year. One of the best mates of all time. Real man's man, great guy. And we used to work in a trucking company together, me and Merv. And um, that's how it came about. We snuck a few tablets out. We didn't tell anyone. I'll find the truckies. They left his door open. And drugs went bam back then. I thought, let's get a couple of uppers out of his glove box and we'll just try them. So this is true. We snuck a few before the game. I think it was against um, Carlton. Carlton, yeah. And I was buzzing 10 minutes later. The hair's right back over your head. I was feeling good. I can't fire it up. Get a couple of goals. But half time, boom. The big downer. I just wanted to have a sleep. Mm. Bad move. I want, I want to know what your all-time favourite footy moment is. Probably, probably besides um, me kicking 100 and taking mark of the century against Langford <laughs> and my first game, it was um, the Swans winning the flag. Really? That was great. Against West Coast? Yeah. 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 Were you there? I enjoyed that, yeah. I enjoyed that. Did you participate? Did you go to the, the, the grand final, the premiership dinner? No, I just went to the room before the game, give them a bit of a pep up, and I didn't want to be hanging around too much because I've got my own fan club. I was at the <laughs> ground, and I, I didn't get a rest. Listen, mate, you are sitting in that chair, I've got to, I've got to be honest here, probably against my better judgment, but I must, it's been better than I thought it would be. I've enjoyed it. Uh, what gets lost in your story is because of your off-field antics that we yeah. forget about what a good footballer you were. And, for three, maybe four years, you were as good as there was in terms of kicking goals in this comp. So it's been good to catch up and I enjoyed reflecting on your career. Thanks, Thanks mate. Mike. I do my honesty. This is Warwick Mar Kappa, the lean meat excite machine, blonde hair, blue eyed, ready for takeoff for open mic. <laughs> Book now for warwickkappa.net. This has been a Fox Footy production for Fox Sports.